Speaking of weird, this Samoa Joe video is very good, but there seems to be a key detail. They completely overlooked the production of this. So Samoa Joe is sitting down somewhere. He's well-dressed. He's got a cigar. He's got a fine adult beverage. Says, I have been a champion many times. I know what it means to be hungry and to be satisfied. To be a champion, I need to be focused. I need to regain that hunger. I am focused, ready. I should be AEW champion. MJF earned my respect, but when I'm hungry, I always manage to eat. And it ends. And that's all well and good, but am I the only one who remembers that Samoa Joe is a champion as we speak? He's the Ring of Honor TV champion. I guess he still is, yeah. What's the point of that then? I don't know. <laughs> Like that Maybe belt. they forgot. There's they may have belts. This that it, it honestly looked like they all the gym. Maybe we forgot. forgot. No, I remembered. Well, we'll find out. Let's make sure. Nah. While well, you look that up, Sky Blue versus Timeless Tony Storm. So Sky comes out with a potentially fatal case. Of yeah, he's currently the television yes. champion. Yes. Yeah. Sky comes out sporting a potentially fatal case of boo boo face. I thought, am I the only one who notices this? And I looked online and there were some people pointing out the same thing some people suggesting the makeup change and maybe this is all reaction to uh uh the mist that was sprayed in her eyes by julia hart a week or two ago regardless it was not the same sky blue you've seen before she's rolling her eyes she's slumping her shoulders doesn't even want to be there even excalibur is like man sky blue sky blue looks disoriented here by tony's weird behavior i presume that this is this is a storyline here yeah so, Tony knocks her, it was a squash. Tony knocks her off the apron with a hip attack, does her own photo commercial, looking at the camera. And, and now a word from our sponsors. It's quite great. So, Sky starts to make a comeback, and Tony cuts off the comeback. I'm not making this up. By crawling over to Sky and just grabbing two big old handfuls of ass. Yeah, she did. This distracts Sky Blue, and then uh, Tony suplexes her. And she has a new gimmick that is awesome. She goes to the corner. She poses. She looks at the hard cam and says, I'm ready for my close-up. And then they do a reverse Rainmaker shot. Where it starts out with the wide shot and then zooms in on her face. <laughs> and then she hit the, whole, hit the hip attack and Storm Zero and one. That was effective. I like it. I like this character. I don't like it as much as everybody else apparently. They're, they're already wanting her in the Hall of Awesome. I'm not ready for that yet. But I, I do like this character a lot. The throwing the commercial went a long way. Yeah. And the close-up. Yes. I did howl at that. Renee then interviews Stokely Hathaway, who apparently now is on the AEW Board of Directors. Because she said it with a straight face, and she's a credible source. So Stokely announces on Rampage, there will be a four-way uh, four match on Rampage with the winner getting an ROH champion shot, championship shot against Eddie Kingston. He explains, we need a champion who smells like Tom Ford, not Burger King and Newports. I laughed. I was uh, flabbergasted. The winner of this match gets a shot at Eddie Kingston for the Ring of Honor title. And we've got Johnny TV, who we never see, Commander who we virtually never see, Penta, who's by far the biggest name of the four, and Lince Dorado. Huh. Those are the four men. That is a wacky crew. It sure is. And no spoilers. But it sure is. Mm. You see Ricky Starks pitting FTR in collision last week. And yes, they are in fact getting a title shot. So that did happen for a reason. So it's uh, Starks and Big Bill against FTR in collision. Uh, the card for Title Tuesday... It's going to be a fun show. Ray Phoenix versus John Moxley. They said it was a third one. I only know of two. Swerve versus Brian Danielson in a TNT contenders match. You only know of two? They said it was Ray Phoenix versus John Moxley three. And you said you only know of two. Well, so this would be three. I, I'm counting this one. This I one see. and last one. Okay, so you only know of one. I don't know the first one. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Uh, Soraya versus Ricardo Shida for the, for the AEW women's title. Powerhouse Hobbs versus Chris Jericho. Switchblade versus Hangman, and Copeland versus Luchasaurus. Told that four-way, by the way, was awesome. Oh, good. Yeah, people that were there live said it was great. So Tony Schiavone interviews Adam Copeland, 
And I made to start referring to these guys as Copeland, Hangman, and Bebe. I knew the easiest way to go about this. Hey, I got to say this about this guy, because I was there for his press conference and his debut. And then I saw him here, and this guy is having the time of his life. You have never seen a happier guy. He's so happy. And then the people chant, Adam, and now he's even happier. He goes, Jesus, I never heard that one before. That's pretty awesome. He's so happy. And then apparently he told us he wants to team with Christian. He uh, lost all respect for him right there. <laughs> yeah, poor decision. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're chanting Adam like his thousands of Roddy Strongs in the crowd. Uh, 2011, he says, I was told I can never do this again. Here I am in 2023 in an AEW ring. The AEW title will look good around my waist. Whole bunch of dream matches I love to have. John Moxley, Kenny Omega, Miro, Powerhouse Hobbs, Jay White, Juice Robinson. I have been challenging myself for 31 years or something. Or excuse me, challenging myself, challenging myself 31 years into my career with something brand new. But the main reason I came to AEW because my seven and nine year old little little girls, they said you should go have fun with Uncle Jay. It's true, by the way. I told that, that same yeah. story in the uh, press conference. So he calls out Christian Cage. Christian comes out to hear what he has to say. For 40 years, we've been best friends, long before we ever got into pro wrestling. But this industry made us realize we'd be best friends for life. Now, why did I attack Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus at Wrestle Dream? I see you out here looking more like a dick than usual. But I still love you. I remember the kid who took Sting's poster to the barbershop so you could get his hair cut. You were Sting. I was Lex Luger. That was us. Sting has entertained people for generations. My wife's grandparents couldn't speak English, but they loved Sting. For all he meant to all these fans, all he meant to my family, I could not let you smash this man with a concerto. I also know that Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne will drop you as soon as they have sucked the knowledge out of your brain, but you're so egotistical you can't see it. So the first time since 2011, and the first time properly in 20 years, it's time we team again. We can challenge FDR. We can challenge the Young Bucks. We can show why we're one of the greatest teams of all time. Christian takes the mic, gives Adam a big old hug, but during the hug, speaks in the microphone, says something very, very naughty, was muted on my feed, and he Go leaves. fuck yourself. What? Why? No, that's what he said. Oh, I thought you were saying that to me. You idiot. Right. So, uh, Christian leaves, but then promises, wants to give a quick reminder, Adam, of what you'll be up against on Tuesday. He brings out Luchasaurus and that little prick, Nick Wayne. That's that. That's the end of the show. That was the end of the show. It was. Uh, I thought it was a good show. And next Tuesday That's is right. going to be uh, irrelevant but exciting. Uh, that, yeah, it should be very, very exciting. A fun evening. Because uh, we got more to announce, obviously, on uh, Friday and Saturday, I'm sure. And I'm sure NXT does as well because they shot that angle for that Ridge Holland match. And so we'll probably get that added to their lineup. And they've got a big lineup, as we'll talk about here. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never 
you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.